welcome 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 if you're new to the channel then hi I'm Sean Butler this little one down here is Bugsy Malone and we are part of the Spurs talk show and we bring to you today episode 71 of Tottenham walks and it's a very very cloudy walk today guys the fog is low don't worry it's not my camera that needs to be cleaned you don't need your cataracts checked the visibility is particularly poor the future path in front of me is unclear even the past is slightly cloudy is that some sort of metaphor for Tottenham season no no it's not <laughs> not at all for me guys I think that Tottenham's future is incredibly bright we have everything in place that we need in the fundamental cornerstones and keystones of a football club that is on the brink of taking ourselves to the next level. I do think there's a very strong chance and likelihood that this season could be the season that we finally get that trophy drought monkey off our back. We just need a few key ingredients added to the, the recipe and we all know what they are. A few extra players as soon as possible. Key players that can bring all sorts of added value to the mix. The positions are obvious. A central-sided centre-back to give some ability for Eric Dyer to be rested, rotated and some competition. A right wing-back is a position we all know that is, has been quite unsettling and troublesome for Tottenham over the last, I don't know, five years, six years. And maybe just maybe if we could be really greedy somebody that could come into a creative role who could be that locksmith who can pick apart the teams who sit low block or sit with a buck bus parked in front of the goal when they come to our place but at the same time it's not easy to not only identify possible targets that can play in those roles for the next five or six years but that are available and affordable in the January transfer window. And so Tottenham have been searching, for example, for a left-sided centre-back for some time now, and they couldn't find the target they were looking for. It was either going to be Josco Guardiol or Indica from Frankfurt or, as we all know, Bastoni from Inter Milan. None of those things materialised for a bunch of different reasons. The players were happy where they were, etc. And so we had to go and make a kind of surprising move to some in you know borrowing the bridesmaid if you can't buy the bride and for me it seems to have worked with Clement Longley I think he's a good short-term stopgap he's probably not the long-term plan for that position according to John Wenham at least we spoke about that a few days ago and you can watch that video here but for me, I think he's come in and done a good job and, and I'm, I'm, I feel comfortable when I see his name on the team sheet, for sure. Finding somebody that can come into the central centre-back position has proven just as challenging. We were looking at Gleison Bremer in the summer. He ended up going to Juventus to play under Allegri and is possibly the catalyst for the news that has come out today and the reason why I'm talking to you about this this morning and that is that Leonardo Bonucci the giant name of Italian defense of recent years and ever present in the international team uh, or sorry the Italian national team and ever present for Juventus generally has uh, apparently told his boss Allegri that he's unhappy with Juventus and wants to have a January move. Now, all of the papers, all of the, the articles that I've read, and this isn't something that has come out of the deepest recesses of the internet, this is something which has been quite widely spread this morning. They all say that Tottenham would make the most sense and would be number one in line for Leonardo Bonucci. Now he's a player that can play on the left of a back four for Juventus when they play with the back four or he can play in the centre of a back three when they play with that formation which they 
have done more frequently in the Champions League. Um, he's a very talented player. He's big, he's tall, he's good in the air, but he also brings with him a wealth of experience, leadership qualities like you wouldn't believe, a champion's mindset and the relationship that he already has with people like Antonio Conte having played under him uh, for, for several years or for a few years at least. To me, he's obviously not the long-term solution for a central-sided centre-back for Tottenham, just like Ivan Perisic isn't the long-term solution at left wing-back. But similar to Perisic, I think that Tottenham potentially could get something done where we sign Bonucci on a maybe an 18-month deal, if not a loan deal, then on an 18-month deal to see out this season and next season. And by that point, I think Bonucci would be 36 and a half, 37 years old. So probably the end of his or we we'll get towards the end of his career. I think it works for Tottenham as well because in a back three, he's not going to be needing uh, the pace that he doesn't have, the pace that he never really had. Big, strong physical presence, as I say, but doesn't have that, that electric pace that we would want probably from the guy that we're going to settle down with for the next five or six years, a young, hungry, ambitious and talented centre-back. But if they're not available, if Josko Gvardio or Bastoni or whoever else isn't available for Tottenham in January, we still need to plug that gap. And to me, the idea of Bonucci, for all of the reasons I've just mentioned, coming in on a short-term deal, I think it makes a lot of sense. But it obviously wouldn't be my first priority. If we can find somebody to come in and get it done. But January, as we all know, is, is a super hard month to get the right deals done at the right prices. Especially given the World Cup is also happening. I think the January window is gonna be very strange. Lots of players are gonna have inflated market values because of their performances in the World Cup. Maybe others will have depreciated prices because of their performances in the World Cup. Who knows? Not one to speculate right now. But I'd love to know what your thoughts are, guys, on whether or not you think Leonardo Bonucci would be uh, someone that you wouldn't mind seeing. He does sound like a Conte type of signing, right? Conte is always looking for the here and now, and he would certainly be for the here and now. He's not going to be here in a couple of years, is he? So I'm interested in it. I don't think it will appease or please some of the fans that have you know, that are far harder to please, uh, who, who would want and expect Tottenham to go out and find the perfect solution for that position. But I don't think it is a, an easy position to fill. As Conte said, the central centre-back role is incredibly specific. The role and the responsibilities and the requirements are very unique. And it's a role that a player either has to know from his previous thing or has to learn. And I think with Bonucci, he will know that role inside and out, like the back of his hand. And so it would make a lot of sense for me for him to come in. The only stumbling block before I run this one down is his current salary, I believe, is something like 13 million euros a week. Uh, sorry, a year, which would be about 300, uh, sorry, 230,000 uh, euros a week which in the king's money is about what 210,000 pound at current rates which puts him right at the very highest earner level and that's just if he were to take over from his current current deal now whether it's his last payday and he would want a bumper increase then that might put the whole deal into jeopardy because I don't really want to see us spending that much money on uh, on a stopgap and I don't know if Daniel Levy would, would, would want to pay those wages either. But it is what it is. Maybe that sort of thing could happen more easily if the Google sta Stadium naming rights deal gets done. Who knows? It's all out of our hands, guys. But I'd love to know your thoughts on whether or not Leonardo Bonucci is someone that you would like to see at Tottenham. Whether you think he would be a, a good fit, a bad fit. Is he a typical Conte signing? Would Levy be okay with it? Is there value in signing someone like him at the price 
but he's not going to pay or play rather every single week and how important is it in your eyes that we do find somebody for that central center back to give Eric Dyer some competition if not him who else let me know guys like share and subscribe I love you all I'll see you next time and as always guys as always bye bye